and welcome to Back Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Let's talk about <laughs> Superman for a minute. Can we? The Man of Steel, <laughs> written and drawn by John Byrne, is the official post-crisis origin story of Superman. Mm. So we have danced around the idea of the post-crisis Superman and how that is our Superman. And all throughout New 52, I'm like, boo! He's not my Superman. He doesn't have the post-crisis origin. And we've really not gone into it too deeply. So today we're gonna to talk about the first six issues of The Man of Steel, which was the John Byrne created miniseries that established Superman's history in the post-crisis world that was then the launch pad for a brand new Superman series called Superman, and then another series called Adventures of Superman, and of course, continuing action comics as well. All of which were part of the reboot, but some of which kept the original numbering. So. Don't get too wrapped up in that, but uh, focus on the idea that it is a it is a hard reboot and a new status quo. And interestingly enough, it has roots in another ill-fated opportunity back in '84, the almost acquisition of DC Comics by Marvel. In 1978. DC launched what they called the DC Explosion, where they launched a whole bunch of new titles with a whole bunch of fun original characters, and it failed so colossally that they canceled most of them, and everyone in the zeitgeist called it the DC Implosion. I was just going to ask if they called it that. They did so. indeed. All right. Nice. So they set themselves up for that one. They did, yeah, yeah. and that hurt them so effing badly that Basically, there was a deal offered where they're like, I don't believe in these characters enough. <laughs> that was it. That was my only idea. That was it. Marvel, do you want them? Jim, please, for the love of God. And Shooter was like, I don't know. I mean, if you're willing to sell them, I feel like that's probably not worth it. But let's go forward anyway. And so they did. And they got to the point where John Byrne was like, oh my God, I want Superman. I want to do Marvel Superman. And supposedly drew a cover. Oh. For, um, for Marvel Comics Superman, which probably looks a lot like one of these covers, but it, it had the Marvel masthead on it. And supposedly, John Byrne has that cover himself. Uh, hmm. But yeah, so he pitches this idea and we'll get into the origins of John Byrne's Marvel Superman. Because the plan would be that the DC Universe would be relaunched under the Marvel masthead, but in its own universe. Oh. It wouldn't be just like Superman meets the Fantastic Four. Right. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Because then you can do, I guess, a secret crisis. And then yeah. first the universe is after. Crossovers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But for now, the DC Universe would be over there and they're going to launch seven new titles. Now it would be Superman, Batman, Justice League, the Teen Titans, and a few others. I think Green Lantern was one of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, seven new titles. And that was it for all of DC Comics, which... I think some of us have actually pitched before, back like after all the 52 books got canceled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things were kind of like in a weird tumultuous state for DC. Uh, and when aren't they? But so John Byrne had this whole pitch put together and I've never seen the actual copy of the pitch, but Jim Shooter has on his blog recounted what he remembers about it, which could mean everything and anything or nothing. <laughs> but there are some striking similarities between John Byrne's brand new fresh Marvel reboot of Superman and DC Comics post-crisis fresh reboot of Superman. I guess that makes sense. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, but apparently when DC finally got their drug, because DC of course launched Crisis and Infinite Earths and that revitalized the company and so they were saved. Of course, they were not saved from Marvel. Actually, companies like First Comics sued and cited Monopoly laws against oh, Marvel acquiring them, to prevent that acquisition oh. from happening. Now, I believe that Jim Shooter felt that they probably would have won the lawsuit, mm. but felt that it was not really worth pushing any further. It was like, why am I gonna fight tooth and nail for a company that no one values? <laughs> right, that I don't even really want. I didn't even know if I wanted it or not. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's kind of fun. Like I that, think that's exciting, but also but, but like- it could be like a Trojan horse. Yes. So I'm not really- <laughs> Right, and it's like, dude, can well, you imagine if they had just gone, okay, no, no, but we'll just take Batman. Because that's what, the, well, that's what would happen. You think DC would have sold Batman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they were selling everything, they would have sold Batman. In today's world, if DC ever gets busted up, 
Batman will never be part of the DC universe because they will do that. <laughs> like they will sell off. Batman will be four billion dollars and DC will be two billion dollars. Marvel doesn't get Superman, but DC does get a crisis and out of that, a new universe. And oh, also they were acquiring British talent and building up their portfolio of notable works. And so DC was becoming a viable brand again. Hmm. And Superman was made by poached creator John Byrne, who was making waves over at Marvel and was essentially a superstar creator at the time. And uh, I believe that Marv Wolfman, of course, writer of Christ of Infinite Earths, was uh, the first to pitch on the post-Crisis Superman, but ultimately uh, didn't get involved in the project, but did suggest a few ideas to Byrne, which included make Lex Luthor a Trump send-up, if you will. Right. That's where this came from, because he's like a rich mogul. Yes, yes. Interesting. What was he before that? He was a mad scientist. Okay. Oh, so they had the white lab coat. Part, yeah. But... So like the, George, the the Lex Luthor that everyone thinks of is from is, this? Is this, yes, oh. yes. A lot of ideas that we come to know and love about Superman came from the Man of Steel miniseries and the John Byrne run. A lot of characters came out of this that hadn't existed before, including Cat Grant, member of the Daily Planet, uh, or Dr. Hamilton, his uh, plucky Star Lab scientist. Friend. I love you saying all these, like, we should know who these people oh, yeah, are. Don't course. you know Cat Grant? Cat Grant? Dr. Hamilton, Listen, yeah. These characters are now synonymous with Superman's entire litany of characters, but I understand if we've really gotten into them. <laughs> but I want to say Cat Grant, was that a, a, a female? Yes. She's she's a sexy member of the I feel like there Daily was a Planet. cat in the Lois and Clark Yes, there was. TV. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So she was new at that time. She was. She'd only been around for, like, Four or five years. Uh huh. That's so 90s. weird. And and there's a lot of like baggage that we put on post crisis Superman in his world that just isn't warranted. Like a lot of my own personal hangups and issues with <laughs> how Superman was treated or dealt with in the modern era are just unfounded and come completely from thin air because they certainly don't come from this. Hmm. You know, like Superman and Batman's relationship. You know, forever they were pals. They were headlining the world's finest. And you'd see them throwing softballs at Nazis' faces <laughs> and encouraging children to buy war bonds and stamps. <laughs> but in 1986, we got this book called Dark Knight Returns. And that happened like a month or two before the first issue of this. And so people were like, Superman and Batman hate each other. Those guys are not friends. Mm. Even though there's only weight to their animosity in that book. If they were friends. If they were friends and they had a history. Yeah, they needed to right. be friends. You to needed that there. history. And that's why I was like, New 52, I'm like, stop! <laughs> it's never been it's, this. It's never been this, but it was that. And it's actually weird because I couldn't find any data about this, but I've heard comic book professionals bandy it about as though it was common knowledge that there seemed to be a kind of unofficial policy at DC that was like, keep Superman and Batman away from each other. Well, so mm. will they, won't they? But we see, thankfully, the first appearance of these two on the same uh, side in this series. Huh. Uh, but ne never mind that, because we also talked about it at length on a sister show of ours, where we literally talked about the whole issue cover to cover. So I won't really delve too much into the Batman-Superman relationship, unless we do. <laughs> but uh, talking about the opening, the intro, like here's here is the new Superman origin, and, let's see Krypton. And what year is this again, one more 86. time? 86. Thank you, I just wanted to. Crisis, Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns, and then Man of Steel. And Jim Shooter's like, <sighs> oh boy. I can't believe we lost John Byrne. Crap. We meet Krypton, uh, and it's very different from the way we used to see Krypton. I was like, no, it isn't. I, I oh, wouldn't uh, know if it was. I know, I know. Okay, so original Krypton was like, Industry, science, and technology. It's 1938, and uh. look at the future. Okay. It's just a lot of Flash Gordon garbage. Okay, flying and, cars and stuff. But, but they kept it up until the 70s. And according to John Byrne, he's like, I mean, it was dated then. Mm -hmm. Like a decade before we did this, they're still operating on like decades old icons for what Krypton's supposed to be, so. As John Byrne puts it, he channeled his Sid Mead and redeveloped uh, Krypton for a new age. <laughs> this new Krypton is essentially a desolate, humorless, sexless wasteland 
made what? with crazy looking robots and crap. Uh, is this where the crystal thing comes from? No, there's oh. no crystals. Oh. Now, that said, it's weird because John Byrne saw the Superman movie in the theaters over a hundred times. <laughs> and so you'd think that he'd be heavily influenced by the Donner iconography from that movie, but he is not because he's a creative. And he's like, I'm making up my own I see. Krypton. But uh, the Force of Solitude doesn't even come into play. They don't even make one until later, and it's made by Eradicator. What? There's no Force of Solitude. Uh, Eradicator is like, I am here to preserve Kryptonian culture, and you're wasting it. Because at the end of the story, spoilers, uh, Superman is like, okay, so that's Krypton? Fuck that. <laughs> I'm an American. I turned my back on that. Yeah. Huh. Which is kind of in contrast to the way that pre-Crisis Superman was. Pre-Crisis Superman used to say, Great row! Like, he used to toss out Kryptonian references all the time. He'd be pissing in his pants, whining about how he couldn't be back at Krypton. Like, he was all about his Kryptonian heritage. Hmm. And John Byrne's like, no. That's stupid. That sucks. He's an all-American boy. He would love it here. <laughs> Screw Krypton. I'm going to make it really unappealing. And so he does. I love and hate everything about this Krypton. Uh, I remember being exposed to it in the death of Superman. And there's actually a lot of weird parallels between the introduction of Krypton in Man of Steel post-crisis and the resurrection of Superman. I was like, oh my god, it's that! It's that thing! I suppose that's probably intentional? Absolutely intentional! No, yeah. it's, it's, it's homaging it. It's right. insane. There's a moment where... No, we'll, we'll get to it yeah. later. But yeah. for now, <laughs> like, th this is Krypton. And uh, what Krypton would be complete without Kellex? Oh. That's right. Oh. Is this where he comes from, or is he This just... is Kellex 1. Eradicator okay. makes Kellex 2. Uh, and then that's the Kellex that you'll come to know and but love. But is this like where Kellex came from? Yes, this okay. is the invention of Kellex. Oh, okay. uh, of, of many, a fleet of robots that, uh, that assist the Kryptonians in their endeavors. Uh, big changes for, the, for the, uh, the death of Krypton. For one thing, uh, the, the, the planet will explode, and it is destined to do so, but because of like the changing of the core of the planet, like something went wrong and the planet's dying, mm -hmm. but it is starting to become radioactive. The kryptonite is the building blocks of the death of Krypton itself. Mm. Okay. Not unlike the origins of Supergirl. People are dying on Krypton and then the planet's gonna explode. Like anybody who doesn't <laughs> die of radiation poisoning is going to blow up to smithereens. <laughs> Well, at least you don't have to worry about planning for the future. Right. Now, this is also in the face of the Marvel Comics origin for Superman, which was Jor-El builds a rocket ship. Wait, how do you know about that? Because Jim Shooter told ah, everybody okay. about it. <laughs> Jor-El builds a rocket. His plan was an evacuation of the people of Krypton, but there was only so much time. Right. And there was obstacles from the council. <laughs> so instead of building... Billions. He built uh, one. He built one. <laughs> but he built it. Oh, so close. Almost. He only needed another like 50 years. <laughs> Listen, it may be if the bureaucracy hadn't gotten in the way, you know? Right. Well, you this scaled one that up took a billion me... times. <laughs> yeah. This one took me two months to build. Right. And how long do we have? Right. Well, we have several billion people we on have this six planet. Minutes. And we have six and a half minutes to go. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it. No. I think I'm going to uh, be a little short. Yeah. We're going to have to. Turn up our means of production. But uh, the plan was the rocket was big enough for one adult person. Okay. And Lara was pregnant and she gets on the rocket and they send her to oh. Earth. And when the what? rocket crashes, the Kents find her and she immediately gives birth to Cal and she dies of radiation poisoning from the kryptonite on board the ship. Why and is that, that kryptonite on board the ship? Well, it was like embedded in the ship. Oh, it was like stuck okay. to it. It was stuck to it. And we actually see that in this. Like when the when the baby rocket fires off, actually it's a birthing matrix, but when it fires off, it embeds into the ship and so there's still a, a fragment of kryptonite to exist. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was Byrne's way of demonstrating why and how kryptonite is deadly Bad. to Superman. Like how would you know? How do you know oh, the kryptonite is deadly? Well, we've seen that it killed his mom. So... That was a big change, and they threw that away, and they did not yeah, use it for this. You don't need to do this. Just have him get sick when it's nearby. I know. I understand. Oh, and that's what they do. No, Lex yeah. Luthor gets a ring, and he's just like, meh, and that's it. Yeah. And Superman's like, oh, 
Yeah, and, and he reasons that maybe it would have an effect on him. I don't know. Right. Oh, look, it did. Yeah. Yeah, but then you got to have all this expository nonsense about how it's like, how do you know it's a piece of my home world? How do you right. know? Superman doesn't even know Krypton exists when he becomes Superman in this origin. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. In this origin, so instead of Lara going with them, uh, they, they decide to keep it a little trimmer. They're just like, nah. And that was uh, Jeanette Kahn, who was the, uh, would eventually become the editor-in-chief of DC Comics, who was like, Mm, like dial it back like yeah, wanted his mom to die in the, yeah, the very beginning make it cleaner because yeah, I like the idea the, the image of Lara and Jor-El holding each other as like the building comes apart and the, mm. and the rocket fires off is so iconic yeah. and I love how every element of Superman that is so iconic is a, is, a, is a patchwork quilt of stuff like Kryptonite does not come from the comic books the fortress does not come from the comic books <laughs> like the, hell Jor-El and Lara holding each other and watching it does not come like there's so many pieces that are all from different places like the radio the George Reeves show like the, the, the other comic book magazines the movies and Wait, then wh- all of it put together becomes this cultural consciousness of like oh I know Superman right right it's like, like, well, you know an amalgam. Exactly. <laughs> you know this, like, kind of, Superman. Th- this, this, uh, this famous bowl of <laughs> Superman's origins that become this kind of, I, I think I know everything about Superman. It's like, you've just taken all this stuff and made, like, a meatloaf of <laughs> Superman. So and, where and did works. Kryptonite come from? It came from the radio. Really? Because they were like, how do we show that Superman's hurt without, like, actually being able to show anyone anything? And right. Like, oh, no, it's a deadly piece of his home world. <laughs> like, oh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. You know, I, I gotta say, I, I kind of like the mom thing. Yeah, it's a neat idea, I, and I like that it's new. I kind of dig it because, much like, yes, it's iconic. They have two of them. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, sending their son off into the great unknown, yes. right? Yes. It's kind of neat, the idea of, like, his dad building the rocket and sending them, and his mother ferrying him, and then the Ken- It's like, it's just different stages of his journey, just yes. the people who went with him. Right. Also, mm-hmm. then her bones would be there. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he could use mom's bones for something. <laughs> or Lex Luthor could pervert it and, like, That's what saying like yeah you're saying in this version Clark would be in the ship with Lara's bones <laughs> what and then of course you know boy in the pod there's a boy in the pod <laughs> what so in this story Jor-El is like talking to Lara he just got back from being told like die bitch like there's just no it's plan over, yeah, we're, we're, we're not no we're, we're not, not saving gonna, the world we're not doing anything we're not doing it's that. over man yeah and Lara's just like so how'd it go <laughs> Did you have a good day? Uh, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> They're minutes from total annihilation. How'd it go? Well, mm, you know, it's been one of those days. But he's explaining to her, like, okay, we're screwed. Everyone's going to die. But maybe not our baby, who isn't even really born. See, okay. Like, what? Here's the thing. What does that mean? Like, okay, you know, like, the movie Man of Steel and how, like, gross and terrible a lot of those things are? Yeah. Well, it actually uses a lot of this. Oh. Including the fact that, like... They're all a bunch of eunuchs who don't, like, have sex with each other. Oh. Uh, and so th- th- Cal L is gestating alongside a number of other children in, like, the gestation area of this, like, city that they live in. Oh. And Jor, as one of his last acts on this planet, is to recover his child's material, put it into a birthing matrix that is built into the escape pod that he's going to fire into space and have the baby born over there. Because Lara's like, um, what are you doing taking our baby from like its natural birthing area? And <laughs> By which I mean this artificial egg we put him That's in. right, and putting the artificial egg into another thing and sending that over there. And he's like, well, you know, otherwise he's gonna die, uh, but don't worry, I'm gonna send him here. And he proceeds to show her like a kind of holographic visual projection of Earth and the people that Cal will come to know and emulate. <laughs> and one of those people looks like Superman, but he's not Superman. He's just a dude from Kansas who works in the fields. Is it John Kent? It, it, I wish it were, and I'll That'd say it a, is. Let's say it is. That's Because that would like, be amazing. I, I love Laura's like, yeah. Laura is like, seems to be exclaiming, uh, like, oh. No, she, yeah, she has oh, an orgasm right there. Yeah, she's, she's just like, like, like herself, boom. Like, because she's never seen a man with rippling muscles like that before. No, it's actually, she's horrified by him. She's like, he, he exposes his naked flesh to the elements. Oh, like, she says that, yeah. Because, because look at them. They're both frail, and they're covered head to toe they don't even copulate you know what I mean like right. no they have embraced science I like, and they live in this like kind of industrial world I like to world. think that that's her realizing she's like I wasted my whole oh. damn life <laughs> oh my god you mean I could have been banging that why didn't you make an escape pod like 15 years ago for me for me to leave uh, yeah so 
Keep the baby in the bubble. I'm going. Yeah, I'm getting in there. <laughs> this is so. What is the point of this? Of like making <laughs> he, Krypton this weird, like it's sterile. I society. think it's so that like it's, it's so deliberate. I think it's so it's easy for Superman to immediately reject it, and so I, we don't feel any nostalgia for it. <laughs> right, right, right. We're not like, oh man, Krypton seems cool. Yeah, no, like, Krypton no, Krypton sucks, Krypton sucks man. You dodged a bullet. I love that Jarrell basically made like a thirst trap for Earth. He totally did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, maybe there. He, he's like, Lars not gonna get on board with our firing our infant baby into space plan unless I make it like totally horny or something. <laughs> but so he's like, yeah, sorry. Um, anyway, She's like, I'm sorry. Hold on. I, I listen. Could you have looked like this at some point in our relationship? No, no, Laura. It's impossible for all of us here on Krypton to have to have done that. That would have required us to do any physical labor. <laughs> Which is anathema to us. That's right. <laughs> uh, you know, he specifically... Oh, he's sending him to Kansas. He's sending him to Kansas. Now, like, he's like, this could be John Kent. He's like, oh, I got a, like, a satellite, and yeah. I can see right down. I know the exact like, plot I, yeah. of land I where really he's going to crash. I really want that to be John Kent, because you're just like... Ma's like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, pitch that hay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they send him off, and of course the planet explodes. Oh, no. Jor-El is like, I love you to Lara. Yeah. You know, because like, while we well, have never wait. really like expressed each other physically, Does I Does she know... know what that word is? Yeah, yes they do. No, it's like, it's like demolition man. Like they all know what sex and love is. They just have a different way of doing it. Like the three seashells. <laughs> and I am fond of you as well, yeah. Jor. Exactly. Kaboom. Kaboom. She's like, pull up that farmer well, one more time. <laughs> before I die. <laughs> This is amazing. She's talking about like, but our scientists are seeking a cure for the plague. Yeah, he's like, are he's you like, kidding bitch, me? The plan's gonna explode. Like, what are you talking about? We have about? literal seconds. Hi. Can you imagine you're a scientist on Krypton? You're like, okay, I think I've cracked the first like leg of this 18 month formula and kaboom! Oh man, oh, wait, I was off. I was off by a lot. Someone forgot to like move oh, it was, a decimal it was, point. It was never going to matter. Ne I, that, I cracked that the greatest problem in the history of our civilization, yep. and we're, we'll all be too dead to appreciate That's it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're not even close. And so now we get to the- This place should have definitely broken out into crazy orgies. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, but they. But this is why they didn't. Well, they didn't like, even- no, That's why they didn't tell anybody. Yeah. They're like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. We're not, oh, no. not having society break down <laughs> into orgies. That's right. We don't want you to know what you were missing. Yeah. Well, and that's also why he only showed Laura the picture of John. <laughs> So then we have the opening that John Byrne wishes he had actually begun the book with. Because uh. the idea that was pitched to him was, like, open it with Krypton. Like, do this crazy thing with Krypton. Like, give us the origin. Uh, but John Byrne wanted us to not see Krypton until the last issue of the miniseries. Uh. And that the opening sequence would be Clark Kent single-handedly winning the latest football game in high school. Uh -huh. And him being like, I don't understand. I'm just so much faster and stronger and better than literally everybody here. <laughs> And you're so modest. <laughs> and everybody's like, "Woo, Clark! Clark is amazing!" And all the cheerleaders are just like dropping their panties for it's, 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 And Jonathan is like, "Hmm." Mm -hmm. So everyone's like, "Woo! Like, let's go to the malt shop and like, you know, just make out." And John's like, uh, "Clark, I'm gonna need to talk to you." And Clark's like, "Sure, Pop. Like after this." He's like, "Nope, now." <laughs> oh. And so I'm he puts, ruin your special day. That's right. Well, because you shouldn't have had one. Right. Because it's you not cheated. there. You, you didn't cheated. know it. Yeah. Well, and here's that's, a, not, that's not cheating. No, and here's what's so weird about it, okay? Because Clark is like, this is amazing. I'm just great. I'm just great all the time. <laughs> and I, I've, I got no reason to think that I was born on third base. And John puts him in the car and he's like, all right. I probably should have shown you this like a while ago. Yeah. But I waited until you were 18. But I just so, kind of thought, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'd be fine. Yeah. 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 So, well, it would be like hard. So I didn't. Yes. So then they go to the field where Clark landed. Because instead of the birthing pod or spaceship being in the barn, it is instead in the ground where it landed and they just, I guess, bought the land or already owned the land it landed on. Was it right. too heavy? It, yes. I guess. I guess. Or they didn't want anyone to see it maybe? Oh, they were kind of in a hurry when they found him because a storm was a Bruin. But at this point, they just put like a big like piece of wood over it. <laughs> yeah, that, that ought to take care <laughs> of it. Yeah. And so they like they 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 lift the big piece of wood. Actually, well, you, you uh, know what? I guess that goes perfectly with Pa Kent's uh, not telling him till he's eighteen. Yeah, right? well, yeah. Well, that problem's taken care of. Don't yeah, have Pa's to think about that for a while. <laughs> so I'm sure this will never come up again. Why would it? 
Oh wait, it did. Uh, so Pa's like, all right, Clark, like lift that giant heavy piece of wood. I have a feeling it's not gonna be a problem for you. And he does and we see the pod and he's like, what, what's this? And he's like, this is where you came from. And he's like, what do you mean? You mean I'm adopted? You didn't tell him? Nope, we didn't. We didn't tell you you were adopted. And what John- it's so what much worse than that. <laughs> no, John is like, I don't know where this came from. Maybe from like Russia. What? Do you oh, mean to tell me that I'm Russian? Not wow. that he's an alien, just oh. that he's Russian. They're like, he's a super Russian well, science baby. Because he looks like a baby. You know what I mean? I mean yes, why would he yeah. be an alien? an alien? That's a good point. That's fair, okay. And so uh, when they when they open the pod, the pod's like, all right, I'm done gestating Kal-El, so here you go. Like, like, ding. Like, yes. Good timing, so, folks. So technically, Clark was born on American soil so he can be president. And of course, hey! Martha takes the baby home. And John, by the end of the car ride back, is convinced to keep it. I, I don't know what his solution was going to be. He's going to put a bucket over it and then, you know. <laughs> Never think about it ever again. Yeah. <laughs> You know, just leave it in the field. I mean, you could take him to the police. We're never going to do that. No, they bring him home, and then they are hit by the worst winter they've ever experienced, and it keeps them locked in their farmhouse for five months. Just long enough for them to say that Martha was four months pregnant before they went in the barn, Uh, and now five months later... Five months of winter? I'm like, what? Five months not leaving one building? Well, I'm sure they went to the barn occasionally. I'm sure they have livestock, but like... It, right, it, but they, they, they had no occasion to go to town. So, no, like, they're far out of town. Did winter hit walk. in November? Right, it must have been like a real serious, crazy November. Yep, they um, didn't go to Smallville for five months. Nope. You had five months of provisions. <laughs> well, they're they, far. I mean, they're, you're on a farm, yeah, yeah, I guess. So then we see like a flashback to Clark's early days as a baby, and they were like, we always suspected that you were special and different, and then we see him like lifting tractors. What? And then we get the other uh, definition. He, he was lifting tractors as a child? How yeah. does he not know? So how does he not know that he's going to win the football game single-handedly? He can fly before he plays football. What, wait, wait, how old? I can't see from here. How old is he? Uh, like, when he's lifting the tractor? Yeah. He's like 10 or 11. Oh, okay, that's way too old. No. I was going to be like, if he was little, because you know. Because when he was six or seven, he was trampled by a bull. And that was also part of the Marvel origin. Oh yeah. By the way, I, I love the idea of how crappy Mom and Pa can't are. Oh, they're terrible. Version. They were not meant to be parents. It's great because Clark was like playing in a field with, you know, Mr. McGillicuddy's prize bull, while John was, I guess, driving home and sees it. He's like, oh! Like, where's Ma? Where's Martha? She's probably baking a delicious rhubarb pie. <laughs> it's it's horrific if you consider the 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 implication of the event because John's relaying what happened that Clark might not remember, although I feel like Clark might remember being trampled by a bull. <laughs> and he's yeah, like- He's not like two, no, he's, like he's like four six. or something, yeah. But he's like, he's like, my son was trampled by a bull. I have to go to him, but I know when I get there, I'm going to find the mangled corpse of my son. Oh my God. And instead he finds that the only thing mangled are his clothes. And so he's like, oh, my son's really durable. Yikes. But That's then he's able horrifying. to like lift tractors and stuff. And then one time Clark is like playing by a cliff and one of their dogs like was overzealously trying to get at him and he fell off the cliff, but instead of falling, he flew. So he can fly too. But he doesn't remember flying? No, he doesn't remember his... flying. Oh. He just doesn't think about why that would be a problem for him as a football athlete. So then he's like, you can see Clark, these are the reasons why you shouldn't be able to play football. Like, because it's not fair and you're like an Adonis at a Superman. Like, you can't do it. And he's like, oh. Okay, so no, he definitely is cheating. He's, he, but, but, but he doesn't like think about it as cheating, I guess because it's a natural God-given born ability, but. So he thinks, he thinks he was a natural, normal human being. Who, who could, could fly who could and fly. lift bulls and And tractors. the only reason why he determines that it's not okay for him to be a football superstar is that he also came from an egg. Right. Or that he's Russian. (laughs) Or that he might be Russian. He might be Russian. (laughs) Well, I'm Russian, I should not be playing American football. No, John tells him he shouldn't be playing American football because of all the things that he can do. But these are like, it's a a narrative device which Burns like, I need you to see like the origins of Superman's powers and when he developed them. But also I want to have that scene (laughs) where like he has great power and has a responsibility not to use it. So (laughs) I'll just, Fudge it by hoping that you're so not that you have terrible so like just learning make disorders. Make it not make any sense. Yeah, just make it so that you forget what you just read and uh, then get to the next thing and you're like, oh yeah, 
What? But I didn't. Why didn't they just have his powers not come out until... <laughs> until after the football game. Yeah. Or during the football during game. The football game well, or or have like... him tell him sooner. Yeah. But they didn't. That's so, so weird. So now we're this. Did they... Oh, but uh, while they're talking about it and looking at the pod, uh, Clark gets really sick and, uh, and, and basically faints. And then John brings him home. Of course, we saw that a piece of the planet like lodged into the pod. So that's where the kryptonite came from sitting over there okay in fact we can even oh see yeah it. he's getting weak yeah okay well, so. how come then they never had it where it like like the one time you got hurt was when you were playing near this piece of wood like why wasn't that a flashback like the only time you ever right. got hurt was, was when you were by your rocket ship yeah but you didn't know it was there i don't know i, I guess because they don't want you to be afraid of the rocket oh so, wow those two aged a lot hard seven years those are kansas years <laughs> so uh john brings are super years. clark home to martha martha's like oh you told him Without me? John's like, quiet woman. <laughs> yeah. Know? I decided it was time. Yeah. And so. I did. That The conversation's over. Yeah, it's done. Wasn't she at the What's game? What's for dinner? Isn't that rhubarb done by now? <laughs> yeah, she was at the game, but then John put him in his truck and then left. With How him. did she get home? <laughs> <laughs> I assume somebody drove her home. I hope so. Yeah. One of the Lang family did it. Yeah. Oh, uh, left you again, eh, Martha? <laughs> yeah, he just, he just. He took well, the boy. Well, you know, Jonathan, he's, he's a headstrong man. Uh, yeah, you should have seen him when he was younger, though. Where he could pitch hay like you wouldn't believe. Well, anyway. Like, so, hey. seven years later, <laughs> we cut to uh, Clark has left. Uh, Clark declares to Jonathan and Martha that, like, he has extraordinary abilities. He can't waste them here. He shouldn't use them for personal gain. Uh, he needs to see the great big wild wilderness that is known as the outside world. Goodbye. And so he leaves. Uh, coincidentally, he also like graduated from high school around the same time, so it does. It's it's not inconvenient. Uh -huh. So he he leaves and presumably goes to Metropolis. Uh, we go. He does seven say he has to see someone though before he leaves. That's true. At the end of the issue. Yeah, and we see is who that, that is later. later? Yeah, oh, okay. It's Lana Lang. Yeah, it's going. Cool. Yeah, it's his old flame. Because uh, it's that mermaid. It's that. It's, <laughs> it's the mermaid. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, yes. That's true. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, uh, did we read that issue? We did. Okay. Because well, I remember we that. Did, no, uh, uh, Frank no, Miller did, did his Frank own Miller origin oh. in Superman Year One. Yeah, and that one firmly establishes the mermaid. And you and I are on the couch. That's why we both know uh, okay. the mermaid. <laughs> I see. It's actually full circle. We're doing... <laughs> we only do or Superman origins together. Right. Uh, but Martha and Jonathan have been cre keeping a scrapbook of Superman... Proto-Superman's exploits. Right. Which are just like, mysterious fire, like, put out. Or... How do they know it's him? Because they are... I assume because he tells them. Mm -hmm. But also because, like, they are noteworthy events that have freak occurrences associated right. with Right, it's like inexplicable how... That'd be kind of fun if, like, if you were building up a new DC, DC universe, universe like some of them were happening. Like, some of them were happening and they're not all Clark. Yeah, like Green Lantern did one of them. Oh, yeah, like, so yeah. then, like, Clark shows up, like, he looks like, like, Mom, what are you doing? Not me. Like, that's not, not me. me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> but it makes him maybe go, look. Yeah, right, like, oh. wait, that's weird. Right, he's, they're, they're going over the, uh, the, the, the scrapbook. And yeah, he's like, oh, that and he's wasn't like, me. and he's embarrassed because it's like, yeah, like come on, ma, I didn't do all these things, right? What, wait, what, no, what, I really who, didn't do that. Right, but who? Oh, did? wait a minute. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of things that are mysterious that I didn't do. Yeah, and only I could do, right? I'm the only one. That'd be yeah. yeah. So either there's other super characters out there, or we're in the Matrix and they're like programs <laughs> yeah. not doing what they're supposed to or, do. I see. Yeah, it's like werewolves, vampires, and ghosts. <laughs> or yeah. I'm even greater than I thought I was. Yeah, or I'm doing that, shit when I'm not even asleep. Oh, I'm like a, I'm asleep in and yeah. my body. That must be it. While they're talking about like the latest exploit of Superman, remember pre-Superman, there's this plane that's rescued in Metropolis, and Lois Lane was on board reporting on it, so it's a lot like Superman Returns. Oh, yeah. Oh. Where it's like a super space age plane yeah. and most lanes on board and Superman had to get involved because it got screwed up and, 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 he, and he lands it. But that's also the debut of Superman. It's the first time that the public sees it and they're like, a man is holding that plane. Uh, Jonathan cuts out the clippings when he hears uh, someone in Clark's room. So he runs up there being like, all right, who's up there? And sees that it's Clark and he's sitting in the dark and it's one of my favorite moments in post-crisis Superman's history, where he's sitting in the dark in his childhood bedroom, and his father walks to the door, and he says, they all wanted a piece of me, Dad. Like, oh. they, they couldn't help themselves. They wanted a piece of him? Everyone wanted a piece of me. Oh. So then he proceeds to tell Pa about what happened, where, like, you know, 
space age plane it somehow managed to bump into a commercial airliner like uh, doink the, oops these are meticulously planned whatever so no, hang on, hang on. <laughs> i think i think i can I, I think i can skim it right mm, oops so <laughs> oh, superman no. it was in the crowd watching it happen and he's like i i can't i can't not act so he just flies right and Back then, there was no alter ego, so for him, it's just it's just Superman in a bomber jacket, right? But that's what he looks like. And so he flies out, he catches it, he lands it safely. Lois immediately is like, who are you? She coins the name Superman. What was he doing? What was his life? Right, we don't that know. Life ends. Oh here. yeah, that's over. Yeah. Whoever you were, that's done. But didn't he know anyone? Didn't he have friends? Eh, seven years, no. I assume or he that did, like, Metropolis they... was a stop along the way of his pilgrimage, but like yeah. either way, he was just stopping through. Did he use a pseudonym? Like we don't get into it. But he he's talking to Lois. For anyone a... who knew him, as far as they know, like, after this, he just disappeared off the face of the just earth. Just died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Or they remembered what he looks like, and they know he's Superman. Exactly. <laughs> They're like, well, I mean, well, and in this origin, he does make a point of avoiding anyone taking his picture. Mm, okay, so like, I have to live a life like a spy. He's always paying attention. And then one time... Because he's he, Superman. Yeah. Oh, right. So he, But he and Lois have this moment where he sees her and he's just like, she's so intriguing. Uh. And he makes a point of saying that she's not the most beautiful woman she's ever seen. That was the mermaid. The, yeah. That, that's, <laughs> you know, he spent four years in the ocean. So he's only been here for three years. No. But, he, he's, but he's like, she's, she's captivating. Uh. But then the mob shows up, and the, and so the two of them are swarmed, and they're all just clawing at him, and that's like what Zack Snyder misinterpreted, where <laughs> everyone's like clawing at him, and he's like ah, and then he eventually just had to go away, and he goes immediately goes, just goes he just goes home, yeah, uh -huh. and he's like, I don't know what, everyone was crying out for me, uh. and I don't know if I can be that, you know, or I don't know how to help them. You know, uh -huh. I just know that people need help, and when they were in the presence of someone who could, they couldn't help themselves. Like they just lost their shit, and which is also echoed in the Return of Superman. <laughs> it's, a, it's a almost perfect recreation of this panel. Uh -huh. oh. And Lois is like, "This is the first. This is just like the first time I met him." And I'm like, "Oh, mm. that's kind of cool." But I love this like reluctance, but also him being like, he he doesn't go. They're ants. I don't like people are, are 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 reaching for him, and he's just looking at him like with passive disdain. Yeah. No, this just, Superman seems like he's worried he can't he can't, he can't fulfill well, them. He can't help them all. He does, yes. He does complain about them because he says he shook with outrage and fear. So he was upset, and he says they were at their greediest, yes. most covetous. Yeah. So he he he's not happy no, with them. He's he didn't like that experience. Yeah. But he also like it, it, he's. For him, he's a guy, you mm -hmm. know? And, and it was the first time that he's experienced that kind of mob. Yeah. And I think that you're gonna feel a lot of emotions associated with that kind of experience. You know, with yeah. people being like, save me, do this for me, what can you do for me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and he emphasizes the ex expectation is yes. what's, that, that's his last thing he says, is, is they're looking for me, expecting me. Right. Yeah. And so John's so, yeah, like, yeah, it's complicated. There's a lot. There's a lot there. Yeah. Uh, so John's hmm. like, I know what you should do. Put on a costume and help him out as a superhero. And so Martha gets to work. No making one can one. expect anything of you if they don't know what you are. Yes. So Martha <laughs> makes a Superman costume, and Jonathan and Clark brainstorm the Superman logo, and then they make it and they just hand it to her and make her stitch it onto the suit. They made two: one for the front, one for the back. Wait, uh, so it's not a Kryptonian symbol? No. For, it's just a big S. It's, it's a big, big old S, S for which is Superman. what we all thought it was. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know, but eventually they'll retcon that. Yeah. Where it's a sim it's, it's in Kryptonian and he was like influenced by that and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't mention it before, but. Right. Like, I like the idea that the cape is a blanket that he was wrapped in on his way home. But you can't do that now because it would be because, irradiated. Well, and also he wasn't even a body oh, right, yeah. when he was fired off of Krypton's surface. Well, I mean, maybe that's part of the birthing matrix. Yeah, here. the matrix wrapped the blanket around right, him. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, Ta-da. And here's your Kryptonian bottle and everything. Uh, <laughs> and we but, also gave you a Kryptonian slap on the butt. Of course. <laughs> they do emphasize that uh, he does get a butt slap in the Marvel origin. What? 
I don't know, it's just one of those things. <laughs> the other big change for Superman, because it's like, that's the costume, right? This is right. the costume. We've seen right. it. We already saw it. But yeah. one of the big changes is the S on his chest. It used to be a little smaller. So John Burns <laughs> oh. like, no, no, no. I want it from Make shoulder to shoulder. Okay. So that's how, and, and that's pretty much how it will be until now. But hadn't they already big been ass drawing ass. it post crisis? Or is this like the this first is, this book post crisis? This is the post crisis look for Superman. Oh, okay. Oh, so they told the origin right away. Oh, yeah. No, this is the oh, first issue. Oh, I thought they were telling stories and they're like, okay, now we'll go back and do the no, origin. No, no, no. Crisis, uh, okay. Man of Steel. Everybody else is getting stuff, okay. but this is one of them. So Superman debuts and he's flying around Metropolis and Lois Lane sees him and she's like, hey, that's the Superman that I saw that saved me from the plane thing. <laughs> I got to talk to him. He's awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, she, so she just starts chasing him all over Metropolis. At one point... A uh, limousine driver is like, Miss Lane, uh, Lex Luthor wants to talk to you. And she's she's like, nah, she gives him the brush off. Because Lex Luthor is a high-powered uh, business mogul who basically owns and runs Metropolis. So that's our introduction. That's our introduction to Lex. So we to don't Lex. even see him. Mm. We just hear about him. And we know that Lex has his designs on Lois. Hmm. Like, Lex wants to... So if you're a, a Superman fan at this time, you're like, oh, you're Lex, like, what? Lex. What? Yeah, like, why is Lex in a limousine? Mm. So huh. he has designs on Lois, and Lois is like, I'm not getting in the car with you. I have to go find Superman. <laughs> you know. So immediately, there is a rivalry, even though neither of them is aware of it. Right. right. Okay. And so, but, but that's firmly established in the DNA of post-crisis Superman. Lex is going to South America for a while, and so he won't be able to talk to Lois until he gets back, so he's chagrined by her rebuff. Mm. Uh, Lois then basically strong arms a LexCorp chopper pilot into ferrying her around the city just looking for Superman, aimlessly. <laughs> uh, Superman himself stops like an armed robbery and does it uh, through a spectacular feat of supermanning. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that John Byrne wants to establish, of course, and this is one of the most controversial, one of the most like well-known, is that we depower him a little bit. We, we reduce it. He's not going to pull the moon <laughs> over his shoulder using a super moon chain. Right. Instead, he, he can be hurt and defeated. We don't see that, but we assume it. And, of course, we do what? know that about 10 years, less than 10 years later, he will be beaten to death by a bony monster. <laughs> he was of holding a banana. It's the S on his cape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does look like a banana to you. I was like, well. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. He potassium. I need my potassium. <laughs> Sorry. There's a, there's, a, there's a montage where we see Lois, like, going to each scene of where Superman had been. Right. And... You know, the, of course, it becomes one sentence where it's like, sorry, Ms. Lane, you just missed him. But I also love this display of Lois's outfits. Yeah, her fashion yeah, sense. She's... Inevitably, she's like, all right, <laughs> I can't get him. And other newspapers are aping off of my Superman thing. Like, I named him, and everybody else is writing, Superman did this, Superman did that. Well, that's mm -hmm. horse shit, because I friggin' made him. Mm -hmm. All right, you know what? I, I, I know what I got to do. So she drives her car into the bay, and she's like, Superman, help. <laughs> And Superman finds her and he saves her and he brings her home. And she's like, how do you know where I live? And he goes, I know where everyone lives. What? Which, which endears him to her somehow. And uh, I'd be well, like... Because he's just so smart. He's just such a... He, you, you want him to know He's such he a lives. super guy. That's yeah. Right. Oh, wow. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's horrifying. I know, I don't it's like it either. He's, he's beautiful. He's, uh, he's ideal. He's smiling at you. He goes, I know exactly where you live. And I've never met you before. Well, it's also just like... I mean... I can cognitize someone who can fly and who's super strong. Yes. And, but someone who knows... Wh what even is that? Well, like, you, how, what, what is the what aspect of your power is that? <laughs> yeah, like, did you spend time memorizing right. specifically where... Just the people in Metropolis? Right. The whole world? Do you world? know where everyone lives? Like, Why? what other things do you know? <laughs> do you know everything? He's Are like, you a god? <laughs> like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's terrifying. It could be uh, him just kind of, like, trying to establish his brand because he does know his he's lowest lane. Well, he's maybe he's like, maybe he's like, okay... Is it less scary if I say I only know I, that I know where she lives because right. I'm interested, well, or that I just I know where everyone lives? 
I think yeah. that's I'm not stalking you. Because he definitely is stalking her, and he definitely has like an interest in her, and so it's like, I know exactly where she uh, lives. Or, because or I, he's like been in like a situation where he's like, well, I need some reading material for the bathroom, and all I have is the phone book, a thing that's like, all right. Yeah. Oh, I read the phone book. Uh, yeah, maybe he's like Johnny Five, he's just like, <laughs> got it. Yeah. I mean, we, he does read like that, that's right? That's true, he can, yeah. yeah so yeah. I guess that's it. He's like, I figured it. if I, I, you know, if someone needed help, that way I knew where they are. Right. Right, but right. how did he know what her name was? Oh, because she's a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. Oh, right, okay. Actually, she's an Edgar Allan Poe winning novelist. She's a novelist? Both Clark and Lois are novelists. What? They write novels. They have written novels. And what Lois What novels a did they write? Uh, I, I don't recall, but they do have names. Oh. Uh, Lois also is a Pulitzer winner. She's already won a Pulitzer. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so Superman's like, he first he drops her off at like the curb. He's like, all right, bye, I got, I got to be someplace. And she's like, wait, no, I did, come back here! She just screams in his face. He's like, okay. And then he brings her home and that's when he tells her that he knows where she lives. She takes a shower, she like cleans herself up and then the two of them just sit on the couch and they gab for a few minutes. And uh, she asks him a couple of questions about like him and where he comes from. And he's just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd like to think I'm American. Like, you know, mm. I'm, I'm, all this stuff. Uh, but he's very cagey about any like personal details so that she doesn't figure out like his identity. Uh, which he has just kind of established. I mean, we do know that Clark Kent was a person who was born on Kansas soil and was raised by, you know, Jonathan and Martha Kent, went to school, has a diploma, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, like, this is the first appearance, or at least this is our first introduction to Clark Kent, Metropolis Man. But uh, anyway, he's like, all right, well, I gotta go. Uh, good thing you didn't have to use the aqua lung under the seat in your car. She's like, what? <laughs> Apparently there's also like a team of medics on the pier. Like the whole thing was a sting. No, that, right. obviously yeah. it was a sting. It and, just but, makes me feel better that her plan wasn't, well, he'll save me. He'll probably save me. Right. That'll be her later, but for now it's just, she she arranged it and he knew it. Yeah. And she, and then let her know that he knew it. And she's yeah. like, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. What a guy. <laughs> she, so, he saw right through me. Yep. So Can't she, get anything past him, how attractive. <laughs> So then she gets dressed and she hauls ass to the to, to the planet and she's like, Perry, stop the presses. I've got an exclusive interview with Superman. And Perry White's like, yeah, you can put that under your desk or whatever because this guy Clark Kent has an exclusive interview with Superman and that's what got him this job. Uh, oh, and, no. and she's like, um, oh, what? <laughs> so oh, so she, she's primed to hate Clark Kent. Immediately hates one. him. She's like, what the hell is <laughs> happening? <laughs> And also, like, she has every right to because, as we know, he is Superman. Like, why did you do that? Well, it's just, it's the football game all over again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, but. Well, it's I, like, he knows everything, but he's, like, dense. So he's like, well, I want to get a job where she works. How will I do that? Yeah. I know, I'll write a story about Superman. Yeah. Even though, like, he knows that she's doing that. Right. But, like, it just didn't occur to him maybe, that he'd be maybe mad. Clark well, and also, like, why did he withhold so much information about himself? Like, he gave her, like, a the halfest ass yeah. interview. And it's like, why? Because I gave a really good interview with myself, so that I no, can one up. No, that's you. because he's like, well, clearly she's interested. I got to keep her coming back. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't want to give her the whole meal. Yeah. Well, I, maybe Clark didn't date a whole lot. No, that's very obvious. And yeah. so he's like, I'll just use like like playground tactics. Yeah. I'll push yeah. her in the on the ground, and that'll let her know I I'll like her. I'll destroy her at every turn. <laughs> And then and I'll absolutely little, dominate her. He literally at work. He, he robs she her. She rules the roost. I'll <laughs> knock her down a peg or two. That'll help. That's what you do when you need to assert dominance over a workaday <laughs> woman in 1986. He also begs off a Pulitzer for this interview. He's like, no, I just wanted the job. Like for me, the interview with Superman gets me my job at the planet with no work experience. Right. But I, I don't I don't want to push it. I don't want to like, rub her face in it by getting an award that she legitimately earned. Right. <laughs> that I stole off from under her that she would have earned another one of if we had published it. Right. But yeah. no. Dad won't know. <laughs> Dad reads the article. Pa, Pa's not gonna know. He has a subscription to the Daily Planet. Well, he won't know the, the other stuff. He won't yeah. know that I sniped it from her. But he will be like, that's kind of low-hanging fruit, don't you think? An exclusive interview with you? Yeah. To get a job at the place where the woman who you're attracted to works so that you could spend more time with her? That's not it! Come on! Oh, and so you forget. just pick the Daily Planet at random? Yeah, and, and don't just forget, I don't find her that attractive. Right, I'm more that's interested, true. I'm more intrigued by her and sexually interested in her. I kind I of see. want that conversation and then for Ma to be like, oh yeah, like you came to like 
bale hay at my my, my dad's farm or whatever. <laughs> like, exactly. For because you love hay. Yeah, exactly. Why? Because you're just such a nice guy. No. Because you saw me riding and all kinds of movement was happening, and uh, you wanted another glimpse. I get it. <laughs> He's like. I have to leave. There's actually a nice moment for Martha that we don't give her because she doesn't actually articulate it, where uh, Lana Lang explains why Clark is such an asshole, and she's like, your father never understood, but your mother did. Hmm. And I'm like, that's cool. I wish Martha had said that. <laughs> anyway, then there's another issue where Superman and Batman defeat Magpie, I'm recently like, created. Magpie. <laughs> uh, the only things of note about it, besides seeing some cool John Byrne drawings of Batman, is that Batman is a psycho jerk. And uh, when he meets Superman, he essentially knows everything about Superman's powers, presumably because Superman spilled the beans about them in his own interview. Oh, yeah. And uh, he <laughs> proceeds to explain to Superman, like, you can see, like, different spectrums and uh, auras and stuff, so you can see mine, you can see that I have a, fi a, a, a force field. If you grab me, you will trigger a bomb that will kill an innocent person in Gotham City. And he's like, what? <laughs> that's, that's insane. And he's like, all right, come on, let's go, let's go stop Magpie. <laughs> so the two of them do, and then uh, I'll stop Magpie with this raging psychopathic, yes. probable murderer. Right. Well, and then and this is just because they're like, well, Dark Knight came out. Yeah. Batman's yeah, like, a they psycho. They gotta do this. They gotta have a. Like, no, in the future, right. he's different. <laughs> yeah. in the, he has. I don't know if you know. Gone through a hard time. Like, I don't know if you know people, but they're not the same person they were like twenty years they ago. They never change. Especially not Batman. What? So Magpie ends up uh, being defeated, and when she does, she like just she just collapses. She's like, "Oh, I need to have the pretty things." Uh, and Superman goes, "Whew, that's 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 kind of messed up." <laughs> like he's, he acknowledges from watching because like Batman, this is just Tuesday. There is a non-zero percent chance every time that I defeat a villain that they're going to collapse in tears because they're all insane. <laughs> right. Superman, like, he stops a mugging or a bank robbery, they're gonna be like, fuck you, Superman. And <laughs> yeah, they might use foul language on him, but that's the that's the long and the short of it. But Magpie, like, her wig comes off, like, it's just a whole thing. He's like, oh, Gotham is a weird and uncomfortable place that deserves you. <laughs> anyway, I would leave this place to your purview, but we have to do something about you putting an innocent person's life at risk. And Batman goes, oh, the bomb's on me. Like the innocent person was me. I, I would die. Right, this is the issue we read. I just, right. I was like, right, uh, we, we read remember this. It and now. Superman's yeah. like, that's really weird. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> but that's like almost John Byrne trying to lean him back in the other direction where yes. he's like, yeah. no, Batman's not a crazy, like that Batman's crazy. Not a, like, Batman's not a psycho. Yeah. Right, right. He, yeah. he wanted to, he wasn't sure. So yeah, he, yeah, he was like testing you. Yeah. Yeah. And this is kind but, of like one of the last times we see them interact for a while. Like we see them kind of interact in Legends where they're both like, it's a dark side, huh? <laughs> and that's it. Superman's like, you're a wacko. But let me wave goodbye to you as I fly away. Well, I don't want to set you off, man. <laughs> exactly, who knows? You I didn't just, say goodbye to me. I just blew up at a hospital. Uh, so, so Batman thinks to himself. I just blew up my own house. Yeah, <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> there were people in there. Uh, so Batman thinks to himself, like, what an interesting chap. In another reality, I might have called him friend. Right, like, they're not going to be friends, They're guys. not friends. That was in another reality. Yeah, that's stupid and lame, and we're not doing that. Right, and you're like, oh. This is like... But I kind of <laughs> liked them interacting. That was kind of fun. Yeah, and they're supposed I, to end up at Dark Knight Returns, where they previously were friends. Yes. This makes me think of um, Aang and Zuko yes. meeting. <laughs> right? Do you think we would have been friends? <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Solid. Just lifted stolen from Man of Steel. <laughs> Unoriginal people, those Avatar, the last Airbender creators are. Oh my are. god. So, we gotta I, establish Lex Luthor. I was really confused by the bomb thing, even though we read this. Yes. It's like, but why would he put it on himself? Him getting himself blown up wouldn't stop Superman from doing anything. No. Because he knew that Superman would be able to tell if he was lying. Yes. So he had to say it was on someone, yes. an innocent person, mm -hmm. which was technically true, <laughs> even though he knew that's not what Superman would think. Uh-huh. But he knew it would be true, and so it wasn't lying, and so it wouldn't be detected. Yeah, that's right. Because Batman's well, brain is a computer. That's yes. right. Yeah. The way in which post-crisis Batman and Superman learn each other's identity is actually kind of fun, because Superman's... The Kent's scrapbook ends up 
becoming a problem and a plot device. Uh. And so Superman gives the scrapbook to Batman and Batman explains to Superman that the only thing you can derive from that scrapbook is that Clark Kent is Superman. <laughs> and Superman goes, that's okay. I can look through your cowl. <laughs> And they're both like, well, mutually assured destruction. Clark and Lois are going to a party thrown by Lex Luthor where a bunch of movers and shakers are attending. Clark has a five o'clock shadow. How does he shave? John Byrne thinks it's a really big important thing to, to explain because he is, he, is, he is reasoned probably because he saw Superman 4, uh, the quest for peace, in which uh, Superman donates a strand of his hair which can hold like a ton Right. And they have it on display in the museum, which is one of my favorite visual gags of that movie. Yeah. And indeed, one of the only things I like about it. <laughs> John Byrne apparently understands that like Superman has like really strong, indestructible hair. <laughs> and like For some reason. Right. And it's like And it, by issue four, we gotta get that explained. We need to explain that. And so this is how he does it. He take he Clark, at some point or another, took a piece of his rocket ship, which is made of a very durable material, and he reflects his heat vision off of it and burns the hair off his face. Don't go too deep. That's going to be a heck of a wound to explain. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, but I, he's Superman, so he's, he's Superman, so he knows. He does, uses the perfect amount of like distance of and angle and everything every yes. single time. But that also explains how he doesn't like melt a mirror because he doesn't use that in the animated series. He uses a mirror in the comic books. He uses a piece of his craft. Right. Is she working out? She yep. is working out. Good for she, her. She works out. She's actually at Clark's apartment to pick him up. She's wearing like a crazy like $5,000 outfit that was loaned to her the, the way that like movie stars are yeah. lent outfits mm. to go to uh, premieres and stuff. Right. Uh, Clark, She's a known socialite, so. Yeah. yeah. Clark has weights in his apartment so that he can explain why he's built like a brick shit house if anybody ever pumps into him and talks to him about it. But Lois is like, these aren't even as heavy as the weights at my own apartment. Mm. And he's like, oh crap, I'm super strong. I don't know. I don't know what's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so that's weights, in the book. His weights didn't explain anything. No. Fortunately, she just never noticed his physique. She, she just, But now it, she does. And so it's kind of like confusing. Mm. She's like, Wait. For her, she's just like, what's your problem? Boy, you yeah. suck. Yeah. But you I like suck the image even more than wearing... I thought you did. <laughs> yeah, you dick. Because she's also like, boy, this is almost like losing a Pulitzer to some upstart, like going into my place of business and just handing people a freaking million dollar interview. And he's like, oh my God. Okay. I really did not see that. Like, I, I thought she'd be mad, but I didn't think she would like hate me forever. <laughs> You She's a career woman. Yeah. What? Yeah. You you took from her the only thing she cares about. <laughs> yeah. Well, because we'll see the disparity between like women in Clark's life because like there's a difference between like the workaday Pulitzer Prize winning ace reporter Lois Lane and Lana Lang, the girl that's had a crush on him since he was a like a five year old. Mm. Uh, but so they they get picked up via helicopter thanks to Lex Luthor. The helicopter has no clearance to land on the roof of Clark's building, and Clark's like, that's messed up. <laughs> and Lois like, yeah, he's Lex Luthor, he does what he wants. So they go to his yacht, which is essentially a cruise ship, it's not even a yacht, it, and he's losing his hair. But and he hasn't lost it yet. No. Yeah, dude, but let he does, it go. As, well, this is, this, remember, this is the origin. Right. So when we get to Superman oh, number one, he will be bald. This is all pre-Superman yeah, number one. Right, right. He is losing his hair, his hair will be gone. Right. By the time Superman is firmly established. Which is in five years. <laughs> <laughs> they get to Lex's yacht. He's throwing this big party. He makes a point of introducing himself to Clark and uh, asking Lois if she enjoys the dress that he sent her. Oh. She's like, oh, I don't want your dress. I'm not interested in you. You know, not that she's interested in Superman, mm. but she is. But uh, she doesn't like say that and make Lex lose it. She's just like, I don't want this. Mm. Like, I, I didn't, I would never accept it. I know that you want something from me, and I would never have accepted it from you if I had known it, you sent it. Uh, we also established that I think Lex has had eight wives. <laughs> eight? Yeah. I think That's a in, lot. in the beginning we say five, and then in another one we say eight, so. Oh. Well, hey there, Captain Red Flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could be your supervillain name. Totally. Lex. She's just not interested in being a conquest for Lex. And Lex, is, Lex doesn't even like sugarcoat it. He's like, ah, you will, you will be. <laughs> like, he doesn't go, no, 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 th those women didn't mean anything. You are 
fiery and interesting and you challenge, no, he's like, eh, eventually, everyone's got their price. Eventually I will get you. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, he asks, uh, this all happens when Clark leaves and the two of them are alone, but then Clark, of course, is eavesdropping, so he right. shows up at the opportune moment. And then she proceeds to use Clark's gigantic body to shield herself from Lex while she takes his jacket, takes off her dress, and wears his giant tuxedo jacket as an outfit and gives it back to Lex. She's wearing nothing under there. Wow. Just wearing a big coat. Then <laughs> the South American hijackers arrive. <laughs> of course. Hit Clark what? in the face with their gun and throw him overboard. Now that Clark is in the water, he can then be Superman and lift the whole damn yacht and just drop it off at police headquarters, basically. Right. And oh. then he'll be like, oh, and uh, Clark, uh, I, I swam to shore. Oh, no, he's just like, I saved him. Oh. They're like, Superman, oh, I grabbed him. Yeah, I grabbed yeah. him. And, and he cried. Yep, and he, and he, pa <laughs> and he, and he pooped his pants. <laughs> Not me, though. Not me, I'm though. Superman. I'm awesome. No, actually, he would never do that because, like, remember, Clark Kent, like, he scoops stories right, right. and wins touchdowns. Right. No, I um, gave him a high five and... Uh, yeah, and we, we measured dicks. His is a little bigger than mine. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I, you should take a run at him before... Yeah, yeah. Before, and, before he gets scooped I, up. I think I heard he made Eagle Scout as well. <laughs> How do you have the time? And uh, that's... Isn't that just the greatest thing you can do? No. No. <laughs> it, Oh, what? So people in attendance at this party, you know, it's Lex Luthor and the mayor. Oh. Uh, while Superman picks up the yacht, Lois like kicks people in the nards, grabs <laughs> their machine gun, and just starts firing at the assailants. Like I love <laughs> Lois in the tuxedo, in right. their inner coat, completely like stark naked. <sighs> That's it's awesome. Great. <laughs> uh, so he he actually, I believe, he takes the yacht to Lex's estate. He's like, do I hear firing? <laughs> right, he's like, yeah. what's going on up there? It sounds like Lois is leading a revolt. Yeah. <laughs> against those gun brave punks. She is. Superman, this is not the safest way you could solve this problem. No, but. What if Lois no. like gets shot while right. you're lifting this ship yeah. and carrying like, it around? Yeah, just throw the ship high up, fly to the bridge right. of the ship, stop them, and then catch the ship. That's true, the yeah. I mean. I could do that. But also he is like slightly depowered, so you know, yeah, it's so more maybe, believable. Uh, but he drops him off like in like uh, basically the bay or the port adjacent to, you know, it's no, no mm -hmm. longer it's in It's port Oklahoma adjacent. Ocean. That's right. true. And then Lex Luthor's like, here you go, Superman, hands him a check for $25,000. <laughs> and Superman's like, what the, what the crap is this? What, what, what? And he's like, oh, this is just a retainer. Everybody works for me. Uh, gets paid this kind of money. And he's like, I don't work for you. And he's like, no, pish tosh. Everyone works for me. Everyone in this town works for me, including the security force that I had on board that I told to stand down to allow you to do what you do best. And everyone's like, um, I'm sorry. Wait. You mean to tell me you had a private security force on board and they didn't act? Like people, people did die. Clark Kent is dead. And he's right. like, oh no, I caught Clark. He's fine. And yeah. they're like, okay, but, but you didn't know you know, that. But you didn't know that, and that's yeah. messed up. And Lex's like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, I just wanted to know what Superman was capable of. And everybody, nobody was in any real danger. And the mayor goes, Superman, I am appointing you as special deputy of the city. Arrest Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> well, this really did not work out. No. And so Lex goes to jail, and there's a silent page where we watch Lex get mugshot fingerprinted, processed, and then jailed. And this huh. is why he hates Superman. You but that was 100% his own fault. Yeah, he but just yeah. had to not have that conversation. No, yeah, but he, <laughs> he, he that's, just that's, anybody. that's how untouchable he thinks he is. Well, normally he wouldn't have been so brazen. Yes. Like Superman, Superman pulled, something about it Superman. It drew it out of him. Yeah, he just became completely reckless. Yeah, yeah. I guess, or he's like, this you, is what I do. I mean, I'll go to jail. Okay. No, for him. Worst case scenario, I go to jail, but then I'll just get out. Well, no, I'll never go to jail. They're never going to arrest me. Yeah. No, he is. He but is you put surprised. the mayor's life in danger. I, I I thought you'd be fine with that. I mean, I guess you, aren't you, you my mayor? Didn't I make you mayor I guess anyway? Maybe so, so. Maybe the idea is like Superman's presence emboldens the mayor to do something yeah, like, that Lex never thought he exactly. would He's like, hey, wait, that guy just stood up to him. Can I stand up to him right. yeah. when he's here? When he's here and I'm not alone? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, get him. But I, I love Lex Luthor being processed and him just being like, oh, 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 I never want that to ever happen again. Yeah. He literally calls up Superman later and he's just like, I am going to effing kill you. <laughs> 
Does he say oh. that? Yeah, like no one does that to me. So like, it's like you, a he's like a mob boss. You made me go to jail. Yeah. I'm going to kill you. Like he doesn't even in the cartoon. He's like, oh, Superman. Like you'll you'll never figure out what I'm up to. <laughs> yeah. We right. all we both know what's up, but you'll never be able to trace my robots to, to yeah. me. You can't prove it's me. Right, I'm no. clever. This I'm smart. Like, he gets out of jail and he's like, fuck you. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Like, this is more realistic. <laughs> this is a psychotic mom. Sir, what did you just say? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he's a, he's just with Superman. Like, yeah, they'll never hold up. What? <laughs> uh, it was hyperbole. Yeah. So, they so actually... Superman's a deputy. Wouldn't his? Oh yeah. Now he's oh, a deputy. Well, now, now, well, now he's now he's well, not like vigilante. A right. So, but like, wouldn't his testimony mean more? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, like, that's true. This he man threatened, threatened an officer of the law. <laughs> yeah. You, what are you gonna do? File a restraining order against Lex Luthor? <laughs> Yeah. It I'm kind gonna, of sends the I'm, wrong message. I'm going to restrain him with my fist. <laughs> exactly. Well, there, there you go. You don't need the court to do that. <laughs> they do actually They do actually show the mayor, like, realizing that things have changed. Yes. Lex declares himself the most powerful man in Metropolis. He's and like, the mayor not says, anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, Superman just changed everything. everything. You, ch- you just flipped the dynamic of Metropolis. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. It's a really cool, like, setup. And a good bedrock for why Lex hates him so much. Yeah. Superman saves a pregnant woman from being there. There's a the subway system sucks and uh, mm. they're trapped and this woman's gonna give birth. So he like flies her to a hospital and then stays with her for three hours while she gives birth. And the woman names her son after him, but re- he refuses to let her name his first name Superman. It's like, so, that's a weird name. So Don't his middle that. initial is S, and it stands for Superman. Uh, and he's like, I, okay. I, he's just like, I couldn't She's convince like, her not to use it. Thank you so much for waiting with me for three hours and letting all those people out there who needed help not get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? It's How really, many people died it's while you were It means a lot to yeah. me. The least I could do is name my son Superman. Exactly. Well, maybe it's like, no, no, I, I, I left to save like five people, but it took like, it took like three seconds each. Yeah, you would yeah. even notice. I just, I just keep coming that. back. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, remember when I went to get your juice? Yeah. <laughs> right? I did that and I saved like a, a nuclear power plant from exploding. Uh, but yeah, so he leaves the hospital and that's when Lex's like, hey, you <laughs> piece of shit, <laughs> I'll fucking get you. And he's like, ah, oh, Jesus, Lex, like shut up. And this is also another thing where I'm like, oh, that changes a lot of the dynamic. Cause like a lot of more recent origins for Superman established that Lex and Superman grew up in Kansas together. Yeah, I like I kind of like this better that they don't know each other that, that They far don't back. know each other until yeah. Lex is firmly established and he's like, you just show up in my house, yeah. in my city. Oh look, he's lost more like, hair. Who the fuck Ruin are everything. you? Yeah, he, he like gradually loses more hair. Yeah. Uh, just let it go, man. <laughs> I know, he, he has to eventually. Superman, uh, in the next story, he like, shows the power armor that you know from the Kenner yeah. Superpowers line of action figures uh, and also comic books. Superman waves this power armor at Lex like, oh, come on! Mm-hmm. And so you're like, like, oh, man. Robot? Well, you think that Lex is in it and then like you cut to, there's actually a dude in there and Lex oh. is just in his office and he's like, what are you talking about? And it's really messed up. <laughs> like, there's a guy in there and Superman's like, well, he's going to testify against you. And he's like, oh, he can't. Because what the person who used that armor to fight you didn't know is that prolonged exposure to the suit will render you brain dead. Oh. So there's a vegetable in there. (laughs) What, can he go to jail for that? He stole the suit, I have nothing to do with that. Oh. Superman's like, oh my God, you're worse than Batman. He doesn't say that, but like, you all know what he's thinking. Uh, so, Holy crap. So then Lex goes oh, to... Oh, his experimental suit. I, yeah, look. He I, stole I, it from me. I, I right? can't be held responsible for what, like... Yeah, it wasn't supposed to have a person in it yet. Yeah, no, it wasn't ready. It was oh, a my God. So Lex goes to a super scientist that works for him. Uh, they Lex's office has sensors in it that manage to copy Superman's DNA and, therefore, his memories... And his visage, which I assume is also aped from like the photograph that he gets that Superman doesn't want to have happen, but also brushes off because why he, would he need that if he has his DNA? Right, I, I know it doesn't matter, but like so it's just also how do his sensors grab his DNA? I don't know, but they do, and so they're like, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the scientist is like, okay, I, I've grown him because the idea is that Lex is like, I want my own Superman, right? And the doctor's like, dude, I think that he's not human. Like, if he were a human, this would be an unmitigated success. But I caution you to celebrate too prematurely because I don't think he is. 
So they open the pod and Superman comes out and he's Superman. And he's in uh -huh. a suit because he's, he's in a suit cop. because that's also DNA uh, built. <laughs> right. I guess they made it for him. But right. anyway, he comes out I of the pod. I want him to look like Superman. Yeah, and he comes out and he just collapses and his skin starts to turn crystalline and mm. Lex's like, you wasted millions of dollars of, of my money and my time and I, I don't have time for this. More like you wasted it, Lex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, not to split hairs here. Yes. But uh, he's like, dude, like I told you. And he's like, get it out of here. Get, get rid of it. I don't want to see it again. It's garbage. Uh, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> Lois's sister Lucy is visiting. Lucy got some chemicals in her face and uh, she's blind. And oh. she's like, I'm blind. This sucks. Lucy oh, Lane. That's right, another, another LL. Um, so Lucy's blind. She Clark's some, like, well, I'm sorry. Hello, what are, here? <laughs> what are your initials? Uh -huh. <laughs> and we are destined to bang or fight. <laughs> but yeah, so Lucy's blind. She got some chemicals in her eyes or whatever, and uh -huh. so she's like, ah. It's important to establish they were chemicals. It wasn't like she was just going blind. Right. But she's sad, and she's like, my life sucks. And Lois like, I mean, like, all right. Well, do, do you are you cool to like stay here for a little bit? I gotta go to work. So she leaves, and Lucy's like, all right, uh, it's not worth being blind, so she jumps out the window. <gasps> what? I came to my sister's house, and to I'm gonna kill, myself. To kill myself. That ought to screw her. Yeah. <laughs> They're not that an antagonistic, <laughs> but uh, Superman's- But well, that's what in. it's gonna do, I know, Lucy. it's true. Yeah, no, no, definitely. There's no way that Lois will internalize that. I was like, look, she was a strong, independent woman. She made that decision on her own. <laughs> it's true. I can't let that get in the way of my, my progress. So That said, I will write an article about it. That's true, big time. She kills herself because she's a flight attendant and she can't be a flight attendant anymore. That's right. Okay, what is it about the lane, like, lineage? lineage? being, like, career-oriented? Yeah. Because her father's also, like, a super if military I guy. can't do the job I started the out with. one specific one. Then that I just might alive. as well be dead. Yeah, yep. that's right. So Superman saves her and then, like, drops her off and doesn't say a word. And Superman does a couple other, like, daring feats of, uh, of do. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Lois establishes her like catchphrase. Wait, he doesn't, does he say, would you say he doesn't say anything to he her? He doesn't say anything because it's not really Superman. It's not Superman. Oh. It's Bizarro. It's Bizarro. This is the, the, the post-crisis origin Lex of Bizarro. version of Superman is Bizarro. Yeah. yeah. I do remember you mentioning this. Yeah. It's like they changed the origin they of They changed Bizarro. it. He's not from another dimension anymore. He's a failed clone of Superman, which they will ape off of in the animated series. That well. like... I don't know how to feel about the, that the because like part of me is nails like it. part of me is like I don't like that at all. Uh -huh. like, I like the bizarro world, and then I'm like, but it does make the loose interpretation of the way in which he speaks a little more clear. Yes, because it has nothing mm -hmm. to do with being from another dimension. No, nope. it's just because his brain's messed up. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> he's just stupid right, because, because he came out wrong. That's why he doesn't say bad bye <laughs> <laughs> or live underwater. Or bad hello. Exactly. Yeah. Bad hello, which is his way of saying goodbye, which would be hello. Ah! No, he's just he's just a he's just a failed genetic experiment. Um, but Lois has a catchphrase. She says, "Greetings, wage slaves. What's news?" That sucks. <laughs> That's she says that more than once. She says it, and then later Clark will say it, and someone says, "Hey, you're stealing Lois's line." He's like, like "Yeah, and I she stole says, her article news? too. What yeah, about right. it?" I steal all kinds of shit. I'll take what you got. What are you doing, Lance? So, uh, and if I could wear those shoulder pads, I would, but I can't. Right? I look like an idiot. Yeah. Clark says it would be news if you came in one morning and didn't say that. She says it literally every morning. Yep. I would hate her. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people do. I have a feeling they're, they're, I, I, yeah. it, it's hard for her to make friends. It's true. <laughs> but she's yeah. not here to make friends. Oh. She's the original person who is not here to make friends. That's right. <laughs> she would be great on The Bachelor. So Superman hears like some noise downstairs and goes down there and finds, as Superman, he dresses as Superman, goes down there, and he finds that Bizarro Superman has some element of Clark's memories. So Bizarro Superman is trying to be Clark Kent. Oh. And so he's wearing like a jacket and he has glasses, but he's, and of course he's devolving. Because I thought they got rid of him. They threw him away, and then he became Superman and like flew around. Right, their plan was, was I'll just throw a body out. Yep, it'll be fine. I'm and in Metropolis. If you're in Gotham, I get it. I know. I yeah, know. a body dressed like Superman. I, what? Who, who was gonna trace it to me? What, what, where would you start? I guess maybe they throw him in the river. Right. 
and he just gets out. Yeah. You know, somewhere where they would think, so I think they, you wouldn't he, see him anymore. When he, when he first debuts, he collapses, and I guess they just assume he died. Yeah. And his skin is changing because, like, they yeah, say... it's like, eyes oh, broken. And they establish, like, crystalline, whatever the hell. It doesn't matter. Mm. But, uh, but also that they say he's dusty. Dusty? Yeah. And we'll, say, we'll explain why later. But hey, oh. anyway, so he... But I love the macabre, like mirror image of Clark where it's like this is what you do and it's like no that's not what I do at all and it's like isn't it right he's wearing a Superman outfit but then he just puts a coat over it <laughs> but you can still see the Superman right? outfit it's like no it's man it's just the rock pretending to be Superman like, <laughs> so they get into a big fight and of course it's like alright finally Superman has somebody to punch yay and so they battle and it's fun and uh, it just goes on and on and uh, inevitably Superman also notices that he's dusty and mm. uh, their battle uh, rages until um, Bizarro remembers that he has an affinity for Lois. You know, he's like, if he has my memories and he remembers like who I am, then he knows that I'm like secretly sexually attracted to Lois. So it goes after Lois and tries to like make out with her. Uh -huh. It literally just like smooches her. She's like, Yeah, what's happening? Yikes! Uh, so this leads them, uh, Superman, Lois, to Lucy. Like it ends up at their apartment. Okay. And uh, so Lucy and Superman and Lois all end up like together. And while they're near each other, Lucy notices that her vision is starting to return. And she's like, I can see a big light blur instead of a big, big dark blur. <laughs> what? And they're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make sense. any goddamn sense. So Superman and Bizarro fight, and uh, Superman notices that like he's got like Bizarro dust on him. So he uses his telescoping vision to look further at it and sees that this guy is not really organic. Like, he's not alive. It's like a robot. And that the dust is like this kind of... Like, robotic cellular debris. And basically he's like, he's breaking down. Uh, and that... Uh, this is the flimsiest issue of the story. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> you don't say! Uh, basically they, he's like... He, he, he's, he's not alive, I can kill him. So uh, okay. uh, he, he flies at him and the two of them collide and Bizarro explodes and rains uh, like dusty robotic cellular snow all over the place. And it falls into Lucy's eyes and she can see again. Yes, and it's like because I guess they're like nanobots, know, nano stem cells or something. But it, it basically they say that the like dust or debris or the, the cellular blah, 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 uh, it, it counteracts the chemicals that I guess are still in her eyes. Like it, no, right. but uh, it, it counteracts the chemical effect right. of her eyes. It's not that they burned her eyes. No, it's they, that they're, they, they're still it's, in there. Right, it's like those people who like, who like left contact lenses up in their lens for like a couple of weeks. Right. Uh, but yeah, so she can see now and we've solved that problem we invented. Wow. But also we established Bizarro. Hey, cool. Well, now she won't want to kill herself. That's so. great. So we've, we've saved Oof. it. Yeah. Uh, also, Superman muses that maybe Bizarro, Superman, knew that that would happen. And so he voluntarily, like, did, pulled suicide by Superman and uh, blew up via Superman to uh, bring Lucy's sight. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, and I'm sure like, that's what happened. There's no way he would know that. So, yeah, he wouldn't even know about Lucy because he, Superman he didn't have... meet Lucy until after he'd already been cloned. Exactly. So his, even with his flimsy DNA memories, he yeah. wouldn't yeah. have well, that no, one. Yeah, well, no, but from that one time when he saved her just now. Yeah. Yeah, but he wouldn't he have those memories. a bond with her. But he didn't save her until after he ran into Lex when he got the DNA. Oh, no, no, Bizarro's one interaction with her. Was just like, oh, this poor blind woman. He like, fell in love with her immediately and then no, wanted to sacrifice like, himself. No, remember, he's in love with <laughs> Lois. Which... Well, yes, but also, also he wanted to help. And I want to help Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. Because I met her that That's that what I time. am. I help people and I make yeah. out with Lois, right? Yeah. It's like, you have any man regular And I sacrifice myself. You could just like rub your hand on his eye. On her, yeah, on but her. instead I exploded. Yeah, but I'm stupid. No, Superman just made that up. Yeah. He just said that for no reason. Like, why would you say that? Why would you say that? You don't, that, that, that's not based on anything. To give him, to give his death meaning. Right. So, so he wasn't such a, a bad guy. He sacrificed himself. Yeah. He can't help. He's a writer, Ethan. Yeah. He's an author. <laughs> a celebrated, award-winning author. Right. Right. So. Well, he has to see the good in everyone. That's right. Even horrible, malformed, non abominations. Yeah. So they introduce Bizarro and immediately dispatch him. Yes. But I guess in a way well, where we can he keep just, making he more. Just come back. That's why, because like Bizarro can have like numbers around his chest, like on Bizarro oh, four. Oh right. 
So Superman's huh. decides. Are we gonna do this whole book? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. No, this is just this is the mini series. Uh, okay. And then the, the the volume that's in the comments down below that you can pick up, Man of Steel, is uh, also a collection of like the Burn era of Superman, Volume One, okay. uh, and we'll continue from there. But uh, it, it, it it proceeds to explain and continue the story that Burn sets up. I okay. See. Uh, you'll also see a number of different inkers on the <laughs> on the book and a bunch of other fun. Is stories. that a green elephant? Yeah, Superman fights the uh, Legion of Superheroes. And also, oh, is it believe, Gar? Yeah, he fights the Titans and the Legion of Superheroes. And so he fights uh, oh. Changeling. Did you say we dump back? Yeah. Yep. I don't want to know what that is. Well, because you just... just dumped on a charter member of oh. the Titans. Yeah. So we dump happens, back. We dump back. Yeah, I, you sure. know, I might workshop that one. Yep. Well, uh, you know. I'm a big green elephant. They all going to be winners. That's right. <laughs> so the next story is Clark is like, I haven't been home in a while and god knows maybe another eight long? years like yeah. who knows but uh, he goes home and he so he super speed flies to smallville goes to the bus station changes into clark and still makes his parents pick him up and drive him home <laughs> <laughs> just to keep up appearances because if you he's back right. in smallville people, go, oh, people how are you how are you back i didn't see you at the goddamn bus station. i mean admittedly right. it is smallville right, like, right. you know they it's gonna be like a be close knit and also group. it's probably a better call to make sure that he keeps his parents safe that's true. Yeah. So, uh, well, and of course, if you're in the New 52, they're going to be killed in an auto accident and uh, completely traumatize him until doomsday clock. But Cool. Uh, so he goes home, and uh, they, they eat, and they have a great time, and then Superman goes to bed, and he can't sleep, so he's going to steal some more rhubarb pie from the fridge when the holographic projection, the hard light construct of Jor-El appears and starts speaking gobbledygook at him. And he drops the pie. He does drop the pie. That's not very super. I agree. He should have caught the pie. Like yeah, he should have had in, in the third it panel. Like he caught the pie and, and, and repaired it. Cooked another one. Uh, but <laughs> he, he's talking to this guy. He doesn't know or doesn't recognize him. He knows him. he can't. Even if Superman can't cook a pie as good as mine. No, it would, never, <laughs> it would never pass the smell test. Yeah. Uh, so the, the hologram of clearly Jor-El, but Superman doesn't know that, touches him. So he now suddenly looks like Superman and he's on Krypton. And... Ooh. He sees what he doesn't know are his real birth parents, and they're like, and, and they're speaking Kryptonese. Which I'm like, you got to workshop that name. But uh, <laughs> they, uh, he's just like, what is happening? And it's all like a projection in his mind that he physically moves through, but he's actually moving. And as he's chasing his mother, he wakes up and realizes that he's actually been lured to Lana Lang's farm and he's like oh Lana like what's happening and he's not dressed as Superman anymore because that was all in his mind um, okay. so Lana Lang is former girlfriend or not uh, is back in Smallville the idea is that she was going to live there forever with him but then when he was Superman that did not become the case uh, and so she went on this whole pilgrimage but she'll explain that in a minute so he's like ah like, I, I saw this crazy crap, and it, my, my life is nuts, and, you know, I'm Superman, and I got these Lex Luthers. Oh, does and, she know this? Oh, yeah. Well, he told her about his powers. We're going to get that explanation in the next Okay, okay, two. okay. But she's like, hey, listen, like, before you really dump on me, I want you to know you ruined my life. <laughs> and I dumped back. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> she might as well join the Titans. <laughs> so uh, he's like, What? How, how could I have ruined your life? Now, he's not that explain indignant about me. it, but he does demand she explain it to him. Right. And so she's like, do you remember, like, the night you told me you had superpowers and that you were leaving? Like, remember when you said I had some place to be? Yeah. This is where he had to be. This is, who, this is the person I had to talk to. And so right. this is like, remember, he's 18. They're on the verge of graduation. Perhaps graduation's over. I don't know. Uh. It's like call, uh, dumping your high school girlfriend before you go to college. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Listen, we got to talk. Oh, <laughs> is he going to ask me to marry him? No, honey. No, it's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that's, she's like, look, we are two yokels from Kansas who live in Smallville who grew up together and you asked me to meet you at night on the eve of our graduation. Clearly, you're going to ask me to marry you. And instead, he's like, I can fly and shit and picks her up and flies her around. And then goes, and then, and, I, forever. and then I have to leave because I don't belong to one person. Goodbye. <laughs> this completely messes her up. Yeah. Yeah, fair. It would. And it's, it's <laughs> demonstrated by showing two versions of her face. One of her youthful, <laughs> ho, like high school aged 
face, and then the other, worn weary thanks to time. <laughs> but, that, just, but that would happen to anybody. I know, but Whether like, they were traumatized like, or not. But, but just like, like oh, yeah. why oh. did you do this? <laughs> Why is it so sad? Yeah, and for her, it's been a long time. Yes, like I've like seen all these you. lost years and, and right. Yeah. And uh, also, when Clark does meet back up with the Kents, and he's, he stays there before he goes to bed, he's talking about Lois and how awesome she is, and he's like, "I think I'm going to tell her who I am." Like Ooh. I want to, <laughs> like, I want to move things forward, right? And I want to tell her who I am. And, and he's I, like, I, "Well," and then he meets up with Laura okay. or with yeah. Lana, Lana, and Lana is like. You ruined my life. And she's like, I, I traveled, but basically all I did during this time was follow Superman. Mm-hmm. Like I went to where you were and I would just see what you were doing. And eventually I realized like, I don't, like this isn't a life. And so I went home and I asked the Kents not to tell you that I was back. Mm. And your okay, father didn't say, get like, it. Didn't they ever meet up afterwards? No. no. Okay. And she's like, I, I begged your parents not yeah. to tell you and your father didn't understand, but your mother did. Mm. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, holy crap. Like, I'm sorry that you felt that way. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say that, but he might as well. Have. But he's just like, I, you know, like, what, what can I say? What can I do? You know, he's like, I'm right. sorry. You know, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you to the Phantom Zone where you'll never age. <laughs> no, it's just, I don't know what I'm going to do. But he's just like, I'm sorry. And of course, well, he's finally found a problem that superpowers can't solve. That's right. Oh. But he he's also is like, but how does that relate to me? So he's just thinking about like what he said about Lois, and he's like, well, I guess I'm not gonna tell her who I am because I don't really belong to anyone. I don't belong to one woman. I don't. I, I can't. I can't be who Lois might need me to be. Mm. Lois is like, I don't need you to be anything. Uh, yeah, but he's like, but I'm always thinking for other people, especially women. And so, uh, <laughs> but Lana's like, anyway, now that I've told you, uh, you know, all my backstory and my trauma, I'm going to uh, let you uh, off the hook and uh, maybe I'll be in the book in the future, who knows. And she is, but whatever. I'm surprised that Byrne doesn't write it where she's like, now I'm gonna leave you. Right, <laughs> and now I'm gonna leave you. Yeah. Uh, she kind of does, but. Like, what does this have to do with jor Oh, he goes back like, why to, did he make Superman do this? Uh, he didn't, like, go, he needs to give this poor woman closure. Uh, he, that's just a coincidence. Oh, okay. Uh, no, actually, what he was doing was he was leading Clark to the baby rocket. He's like, hey, And hey, he bumped into his Clark. ex-girlfriend on the way to the baby rocket. <laughs> what are you like, doing? What, is, what is this? <laughs> We're supposed to go to the rocket? What? Huh. You're getting distracted with this? Oh, God, jeez. Now it's morning. Ugh. So... He gets to the 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 you know the heavy piece of wood, and he moves it, and uh, it's gone. Oh! And the rocket has been dragged someplace, and then the hologram appears, and the hologram is clearly like, "Get the rocket!" Like, I need you to. But you gotta pick up the rocket. Yeah, but the hologram is starting to like talk to him and yell at him, and it's speaking this crazy moon language, and he's just like, "Ah!" Meanwhile, Jonathan and Martha have woken up, found out about Clark, and have driven to this site, and. Uh, yeah, so inevitably, uh, hmm. having touched him originally, yeah. that teaches Superman all of... First, you think language. it's the language. It's hmm. Kryptonese. And you're like, oh, but in actuality, he has dumped everything about Krypton into his head. Uh. Like, the memories of his parents, the all the museums and everything in them, like all of their great works, like everything that was Krypton, like he was a, a captain of a starship and they encountered a satellite that had a flute inside of it and it <laughs> beamed all of their experiences into his head. Uh, I would love a miniseries. Is it that sad? Uh, it, it, no, it's oh. no, no, nothing is that sad. This is just kind of like, he gets all the context and information about Krypton and then immediately dismisses it. But we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so like, for now, well, that sucks, and those people are terrible, and they should not be remembered. More or less. It's more like, <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that. I know that now. Um, but yeah, so he's. <laughs> Thanks for telling but me. But Jor-El is like, you need to know all this stuff, and blah. And he's like, hey, you're my kid. Remember. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then Jonathan grabs a shovel and then hits Jor-El in the face with it, discorporating the hologram and sending it off to oblivion. This is also punctuated in that random Return of Superman issue where Jonathan had a heart attack and uh, while he is in the throes of death has this vision quest where he is in Korea and has to find this like lost airman. The airman, of course, is uh, an allegory for his dead son. 
And uh, so he goes through these trials and ends up like bumping into like eternity and oh. Blaze. She's like, oh, I'll give you the airman for your soul. And he's like, eat shit. <laughs> uh, but then Jonathan happens upon the like Kryptonian funereal procession for the last son. And like they're like leading him and Superman draped with like the cape but it's over his chest instead. And he's just like letting them like carry him to the great beyond. And John's like, don't do it. Superman sees the pallbearers who are leading him to oblivion as like his father and like Kryptonians. But John sees them as hooded tentacle beings that are demons. Oh. And so when like his father tries to pull Superman away from Jonathan, Jonathan conjures a shovel and then hits him in the face again. I'm like, he did that in the, in the origin. Yeah. <laughs> He's always hitting Jor-El in the face with the shovel. <laughs> hey, Rebirth, how come you didn't hit him in the face with the shovel? And that's what Lois should have done when he showed up to take John. His parents you know, were like, what was that all about? And he's like, I have to be alone. I have to go to a fortress of <laughs> solitude. No, you'd think that, right? No, remember, eradicate. I know. Him. I'm just. So, you know, he goes. He does need to be solitude. I need. I need to right. go to some place of solitude. But if I yeah. had a fortress yeah. of solitude, I'd I keep would. all my crap there. I need to specifically I, not go to one because uh, we don't have want to that. do no, that. No, so he goes to like. <laughs> I, I assume it's like Mount Everest, and he goes to like the, mm. the highest point. And he's just kind of thinking about like I know everything about Krypton. Like I remember, I know songs and the language and all their crap, and I know about like their bureaucracy and how the planet <laughs> died, and I know my parents' names and stuff. He's like, and, you know what uh, I should do? I should write a best-selling sci-fi novel. <laughs> Really just rub it in Lois's face. Yeah. That'll get her to like me. Yeah, that'll, that'll really win her over. Uh, but he's like, yeah, no, that place sucked. It was sterile and gross. And it, and it like, it, it was too, like, full of itself to, mm. like, get out of its own way. It and deserved save itself. what happened to it. Not that it deserved it, but rather, <laughs> like, I reject it. And I wholly embrace being human. Like, I'm from right. here. Not only am I from Earth, but I'm from America, damn it. Right. I'm like I might be adopted, but right? But I'm I don't, from here. Get me need an to eagle. Meet yeah, my birth parents. Yes, and then yeah. I think Adventure Superman number one has him doing that pose with an eagle. Oh, cool! Nice. There you go. Yeah. So then uh, that launches into the Superman series. That is the, uh, the the mini series that was first titled The Man of Steel, not to be confused with the Bendis written mini series The Man of Steel, which uses the same logo, but. Uh, this is the post-crisis origin for Superman. It is the springboard for a new bold era for Superman, but also like it has a lot of interesting hallmarks that are holdovers, but are quickly dismissed. Like we don't talk about Candor, we don't talk about the Fortress, we don't talk about Jor-El in any way. We, we don't talk about any of that stuff. None. What did you say? I said Bruno. Oh, goddamn! <laughs> One of my major criticisms of New Fifty Two Superman was like, I don't like Superman learning. I want Superman to be a bastion of hope, a, a right. beacon that like is is a is a you know a guiding light for the superhero community. But this guy ain't that either. No, like he had some growing pains. Well, and, uh, yeah, but in these issues that are like pre, yeah, the but actual also, issue, when, but no, but you'll see him. Oh, he's in still Superman. learning. Like he's the, still like okay. developing and he's still figuring it out. Like he's not flawless, and right. he, he is kind of a super dick sometimes. And, <laughs> And, it, and it's well. That's it, his. That's his. Uh, he's got to have some flaws. Right. 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 So, but like he, well, he doesn't have to. Right. But, he, but like it helps writers to today write. are like no, mm. like, no, he doesn't. Right. You know, he is. He is an ideal. He's. He's on a pedestal for a lot of right. writers nowadays. And it's well, he tough. did. He did learn that stuff, and now he knows it. Right. We're done. Yeah, we're good now, right? Yeah. He's like, a we fully don't mature to... adult person. He's thirty-eight goddamn years yeah, old. He shouldn't be. <laughs> like he should. Be, he he learned should already some... figure that out by now. But like, no, maybe not. You know. But uh, yeah, I, I, I find that the post-crisis Superman origins are complicated, mm -hmm. which is cool and interesting, but also flies in the face of what I know Superman to be, mm -hmm. uh, which is like, because I like a Superman who is an ideal and hopeful and intrinsically the North Star. Yeah. You know, but... You want a Superman you can rely on. Uh, rely on, not, not relate can to. You rely like on. I don't need yeah. to relate to him. I do need to rely on him. But, yeah. but but am I one of those grubby metropolisites who's just oh give me what I want? Like maybe that's my problem. You know, maybe a Superman is. Like, <laughs> but the idea of Superman shrouded in a shadow in his old dad's easy chair, just going like they all wanted a piece of me, pa. That's also uh, brought mm. up in the uh, Death of Superman. That's like pa is like I pushed him to be this, and now he's dead. Yeah, and like he remembers his son, like warning him essentially. Like, yeah, this is this is the path. They'll they're they're gonna take it all from me, Dad. Like, 
and I'm like, mm. wow. I and I and I love this like realization that I'm having at this moment right now, which <laughs> is that as we talk about the origins of Superman, all I can think of is his death. Mm-hmm. Like that, and that, and that they endlessly parallel each other. Yeah. And that that there is any narrative uh, truth from such a vacant, empty, <laughs> terrible thing like the death of Superman. <laughs> yeah, it's not that it was like. It's not that there was no like thought or artistry behind right. it, but it is obscured by how stupid it is. And, and, and became. Like the fact that he's a rock monster yeah. that just the, came from nowhere. Invented to die, like, yeah. to, to kill Superman. Just like, wh- and could you have just spent like, a little bit more time on it? Like, I'm, I'm glad that, but I'm also glad But maybe didn't. that's the point. I, I love that they didn't. Yeah. Like Superman, I, I, Doomsday is, when they complicate him, I don't like him. Mm. No, Doomsday is a rock monster. He is a golem made by the 90s right. to kill Superman. Yeah. That is why he's there. And then when he does, he does not exist. He's irrelevant now. Right, it's over. It's over. Every time they try to like deepen him or give him yeah. like anything, like the Doomsday virus, I'm like, get the hell out of here. You didn't understand Doomsday. Doomsday is a totem. He represent he represents the era that they're in of excess and grit and edge. Mm-hmm. Like he is a totem of the time they came from, and that's really cool. But also, like you get things from it, like the four Supermen. Mm-hmm. All four of them are used. Cyborg Superman is a classic, now heavy hitter villain in the DC universe. Superboy, a uh, messianic hero of the two thousands. Mm-hmm. Eradicator Superman. Occasionally used and steal a, 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 a black representative Superman character who yeah. has like who, origins who has, and a history and, yeah. a, and, a, and, a, and a, his own whole cast of characters and a fan base. A fan and, base. Like yeah. there's a lot that came from that, and it all being because Lois and Clark the New Adventures Superman existed. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> how fun. Yeah, I guess I, I guess there is something interesting too in that Doomsday isn't. Anybody? Yes. Right. It's yeah, like, I'm glad he's not like made by Lex Luthor. Yeah, it's like no, like if you try to save the world, like maybe sometimes some random thing is going to kill you. Like, right. Eventually, your number is going to come up. And yes. in this case, it was it was Doomsday. Yes. You know, like or the, that's like, like the danger. <laughs> or maybe like meta, you know, when you're thinking about it like metatextually, it's like you know the the universe abhors imbalance. <laughs> And it's like, you know, you thought that, like, Lex Luthor was Superman's greatest villain. But, like, no, Superman improperly stacks the deck. And so the universe conjured a A rock monster. And Superman, like, has a lot of meaning and depth. And Doomsday has none of those things. Right, he's the opposite of Superman. He is the opposite of Superman. And he is is engineered. The universe made him to to, to balance the scales. Hmm. Like my, I remember showing the death of Superman to my parents because, of course, like they encouraged me to buy it because mm-hmm. they thought it was going to pay for my college fund. <laughs> right. And uh, I was like, they killed Superman at the end. And my parents didn't believe it. They were like, no, no, because in the in the narrative flow, it says this is a day that a Superman died. And my dad was quick to say, no, they say a Superman. Doomsday is a Superman. Oh. And I'm like. But he really did die, though. They packaged black memorial armbands with this comic book. <laughs> right. The next issue is called Funeral for a Friend, and the funeral isn't for Doomsday. <laughs> but that doesn't make Doomsday any less a Superman. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, that's right. Fun. This Also, this collection has a great moment where uh, Lex Luthor uses a supercomputer to find out Superman's identity, and it goes, Clark Kent is Superman, and he's like, Stupid machine! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, do you know what this means? It I wasted billions of dollars. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. I was channeling that. I didn't even fucking totally know did. it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted billions of dollars on a stupid supercomputer. There's also, the, ooh, we we'll probably won't do it. So here's another great moment. <laughs> There's a backup story where Lex Luthor is eating at some divey diner, and he introduces himself to the waiter, and the waiter is just like this this, 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 this plain Jane woman who works in a diner, and her and her husband works at the gas station, and Lex Luthor's like, I will give you a million dollars if you sleep with me and live in my penthouse for one month, and she's like, Oh, I can't, I don't know, and he's like. You know, I'll be in my limo, I'll wait exactly 10 minutes, and then I will depart. And she, like, can't wrestle with it. She's like, oh, and she's talking to the waiter. She's like, I can't betray my husband. And they're like, what are you talking about, honey? It's Lex Frippin' Lufo. He'll understand. And she, like, calls her husband and, uh, like, tries to get him, and he's and she hangs up before she can even tell him anything. Mm. And then Luther leaves, like, four minutes into the time. 
And that's what he does sometimes. He just drives around middle America oh and God. offers people salvation only to wrench it from their hands before the it's time like, runs out. If she out. had said yes, he, he she, still would have left. Yeah, and she would have been going out and yes. he would have driven away. Yes. Yep. And he's like, I know. Like, now she'll never know what she would have chosen. Ha 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 ha. And then Burn had a sequel planned, they never did, where she tracks him down and waits for him to come out of an elevator and then takes out a shotgun. And, and Lex Luthor goes, oh my God. Superman save me! And Superman shows up and he's like, what's going on here? And she proceeds to explain to him what's going on, like what happened? And he goes, oh, okay. And he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and then she proceeds to explain to Lex her entire life and how he ruined it. And then pulls the trigger and a flag pops out and says, bang. And she's like, now you'll know that I always could have killed you. <laughs> and then leaves him there. And it's like, that's just her revenge. Right. That's awesome. Now, of course she couldn't have because Superman well, uses X-ray Superman vision to see that the gun, the gun was not a real gun. <laughs> right? But he's like, I also wanted Lex to like soak in it for Yes, and to feel like he was about to die. Yes, and yeah. then I'm not going to save you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's but yeah, no. Uh, uh, like I put that's, that together too. I'm like, a, oh my that's god, Superman! Great new. story. Yeah, and it'll never wow. be published. Wow. You know, we we touched on a number of items that appear in the animated series, multiple animated series, multiple movie franchises, and the comic books. Like everything that happens in this, or at least some element of this book, is inherent in every modern interpretation of Superman going forward. Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I talk with my hands. There's just so much Superman everywhere. <laughs> it's like yeah. Superman. Oh, oh. So there you have it. Man of Steel. I really enjoy it, even though I don't really enjoy it. Like, I love it, but also there's some parts I'm like, all right, well, well, we'll get there someday. But uh, I also love that it's not just the post-crisis origin for Superman. It's also this, like, weird manipulated homunculus from the Marvel pitch. <laughs> like, what you're reading is essentially Marvel Superman. Yeah, this is the cool. origin point for what... Superman in the Marvel Universe, or would have would inevitably become. Although I wonder, because that would have been the new DC Universe Superman in the Marvel multiverse. So when they inevitably merged universes or brought Superman in, would they have done a re-reboot? <laughs> Where it's Marvel know. Superman. Oh. But we definitely know if it was the Marvel version that there would have been Bones. Mara's <laughs> Bones would have definitely been in that ship. Not in the ship, because she has to have she, has she to have birth. Baby, No, she would have had the baby in the ship. Like yeah. they would have uh, popped the hood, and then Jonathan would have delivered the baby. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like but out then, of the ship. Yeah, and then. Her, oh yeah, then they would have buried her. Yeah, that's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah. Her bones are on Earth. That's true. Yeah, yeah. and then Lex could have dug them up and done yes. something with them. Yeah. And they would have been irradiated, and like I don't know. Maybe yeah, she would have yeah. Kryptonian bones. And he could like, yeah. and he could a make skeleton. and he could There'd make a, grave, a, like a dagger out of them. Oh yes. Kryptonian That's really dagger. messed up. Made out of your mom's like, skeleton. Like, I stabbed you. Oh, I'm killing you with your mom. With your mom's femur. <laughs> yeah. It is messed up. That's Why messed would you up. think of that? I, I don't know. What kind of person would think of that? I think I would like to know what creators in 87. Like, no, it was, it was sold in 84. Don't let me near anyone's bones. Okay? Yeah. It's Tiffany all has saying. plans <laughs> for bones. I've never known you to woodwork, but perhaps uh, Some bone, bone work. work. Yeah. I'm a whittler. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. <laughs> I I, uh, I just don't think there's anything wrong with going down this creative like rabbit hole. Yeah, here. no, it's true. No, there's no <laughs> bad ideas in this open <laughs> forum here. But I want to know like who would I mean John Byrne would have written it, but like who would have redone the Marvel Superman? I want to say something like Louis Simonson, who of course like created John Henry Irons and was working on Superman, wrote Superman. Uh, Man of Tomorrow and Man, uh, Man of Steel. She what year are we talking about? Uh, it, the, the, the Marvel Superman would have launched in 84. My guess is they would have waited about two years. So probably around 86. So, you know, probably somebody like Jim Shooter. Oh, they wouldn't wait then. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, you know, it would have sold. <laughs> <laughs>